الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله ديفيوز مدني شنان Welcome back to our silsila, O oh, You Who Believe, in which we take a look at the verses of the Holy Qur'an, in which Allah Azza wa Jal begins with the statement, Ya أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O oh, You Who Believe. And we try to see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us in the light of these beautiful verses of the Holy Qur'an. These verses in which Allah Azza wa Jal has addressed the believers has called out to the believers with this statement of honor and respect in which Allah has bestowed upon the believers a special honor by calling out to them with the attribute of faith and belief. Before we go into today's verse and the pearls of wisdom and pearls of guidance that we learn from this verse, let's hear a virtue and blessing of reciting the Ruh Sharif, peace and blessings upon our noble Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's reported that our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, whoever recites the Ruj Sharif upon me 50 times in a day, I will shake hands with him on the Day of Judgment. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa baraka wa sallam. In Surah Al-Hujurat, which is in order the 49th Surah of the Holy Quran, in the 12th verse, Allah Azza wa Jal addresses the believers and says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu ijtanibu kathiran min al-dhan, inna ba'da al-dhan ithm, wa la tajassasu, wa la yaghtab ba'dukum ba'da, ayuhibbu ahadukum an ya'kula lahma akhihi mayta, fakarihtumu. Wattaqu Allah, inna Allah tawwabu al-raheem. Translation from Ganzul Iman, O you who believe, abstain from excessive assumptions. Indeed, some assumption becomes a sin. And do not look out for faults, and do not backbite one another. Would any of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother? You would hate it. And fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is oft returning and merciful. Deviyuz Amadani Channel. In this verse of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has addressed the believers. O oh, you who believe. And in this verse, after this address, after calling out to the believers, Allah Azza wa Jal has prohibited the believers from three characteristics, from three types of evil. Number one, su'udhan, negative assumptions, jumping to negative conclusions about people. Number two, the jassus. The justice means looking out for people's faults, searching for faults in people. And number three, ghibah, backbiting. Insha'Allah, in this episode, we'll be going into detail into these three evil diseases and seeing what they are, what the definitions of them are, what the signs of them are, and what harms they hold for us personally and for our community, and how we as believers must abstain and stay away from all three of them. So in this verse of the Holy Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal is treating the diseases of the believers. Allah Azza wa Jal is purifying our hearts. Allah Azza wa Jal is teaching us which evils we have to cure ourselves from. The first of them, su'udhan, negative suspicion. About this Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, O oh, you who believe, Refrain from excessive assumptions. Inna ba'd al-zanni ithm. For indeed, some assumptions, some conclusions that we jump to, end up becoming sins. So what is negative assumption? 
What is negative suspicion? The definition of su'uzan is believing with certainty in your heart that somebody is bad, that somebody is evil without any evidence. And this is haram, this is forbidden. Having a bad suspicion, having a negative assumption against a Muslim is haram. And in fact, Imam Ahmad Raza Khan alayhi rahmatul rahman, he stated in Fatah Zaviya in volume 22 that su'uzan, negative suspicion, a negative assumption, this only comes out from an evil and wicked heart. So if a person jumps to negative conclusions about people, if a person believes with certainty that somebody is bad or somebody is evil without any evidence, this is a sign that that person's heart is evil. And in fact, in another verse of the Holy Quran, in the 36th verse of Surah Bani Israel, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ And do not go after that thing of which you do not know. إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادَ كُلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولًا No doubt, the ear and the eye and the heart are all to be questioned. And once in the lifetime of our beloved Prophet وسلم, an individual was killed in a battle. And this individual was killed in a battle because somebody assumed that he had recited the kalima only because a sword was hovering over his head. This individual had the sword hovering over his head. He was about to be killed in the battlefield. Initially he was fighting on the side of the disbelievers. When the sword came over his head, he recited the kalima. He recited La ilaha illallah. He proclaimed and testified that there is none worthy of worship except for Allah. But he was still killed. He was still killed because the person with the sword in his hand assumed, had the assumption that this individual had only recited the kalima to save his life. He had only recited the kalima so that the sword would not be passed over his neck. He had only recited the kalima to protect his own life, not with sincerity and not with true faith. So because of this assumption, that individual was killed, despite the fact that he had recited the kalima. Upon this, our beloved Prophet وسلم, said the following words, أَفَلَا شَقَقْتَ عَنْ قَلْبِهِ حَتَّى تَعْلَمْ Did you split his heart so that you would have come to know for certain what was inside it? There was no way of knowing what was inside that person's heart. So, he should not have been killed. And when we look at the evil of negative assumption, jumping to ne negative conclusions, we find that this is completely illogical. Because when we jump to a negative conclusion about somebody, without asking him, without seeking information, just because of what our mind thinks, just because of the assumption that our mind makes, this is so illogical because there is no way for us to know what is in the heart of anybody else. Our eyes can only see what is apparent. Our eyes are not able to see within the heart of a person to see what intention he is doing anything with. And this is why having false assumptions, having negative assumptions about people, about believers, is not permissible. And in one narration, our beloved Prophet ﷺ actually said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَالظَّنْ فَإِنَّ الظَّنَّ أَكْذَبُ الْحَدِيثِ The beloved Prophet ﷺ said, Beware of negative assumption. For indeed, negative assumption is the most evil, is the most false type of speech. And why is this haram? Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah ta'ala, he explains. And he makes it very clear for us. He teaches us and he says that negative assumption is haram because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the realities of what is hidden in a person's heart. If you negatively assume something about a person in your heart without any evidence, then this is from shaitan and this is the biggest form of fisk. This is the biggest form of transgression. And why is it haram? Why is negative assumption haram? We're being taught here that we have no way of knowing what is hidden inside a person's heart. And if we jump to that conclusion, if we assume that we know what is in that person's heart, and we assume that it's evil, then this is from shaitan. And this is the biggest form of transgression. And the scholars have mentioned 
two situations in which an assumption about someone can become a sin. When does an assumption become a sin? Imam Badruddin al-Aini he says, Assuming something bad about somebody in the heart is just as haram as saying something bad about him with the tongue. But he says a negative assumption refers to firmly believing something bad about a person. As for whispers and doubts which rise in the heart, these are forgiven, as long as they do not transform into certainty. So if you see somebody doing something, and immediately a whisper comes into your, into your heart and mind, a doubt comes into your heart and mind about that person, that maybe that person is committing a sin, maybe that person is involved in some type of evil, if it's just a whisper and a doubt, which you remove straight away, which you empty your heart of straight away, then this is forgiven. Because you did not allow it to transform into certainty. But if, when you see that person doing something, when you see that person performing some kind of activity, and you jump to a negative conclusion, the whisper or doubt comes into your mind, that this person is involved in an evil activity, without any evidence, you don't have any evidence for that. And you assume that the person is evil, you assume that the person is sinful, without any proof, and that whisper and doubt that comes into your heart and mind, you allow it to stay, you allow it to remain, you allow that whisper and that doubt to turn into certainty, now you will be regarded as sinful, and now you have fallen into haram. And Imam Abdul Ghani and Nabulusi, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, he says, that negative assumptions about Muslims, based on doubt or suspicion, are also haram, when the effects of those assumptions become apparent on the limbs. So a person has an assumption about somebody, a person thinks that so-and-so is sinful, or so-and-so is evil. And now this assumption becomes physically apparent on the limbs, on the body parts. How could that be? For example, a person physically begins to act upon those assumptions. Like he expresses the negative assumption with the tongue. He tells other people that such and such is sinful, based on the assumption that he's made without any evidence. Or he begins to treat, he begins to treat that person differently. He begins to treat that person with disdain. He begins to treat that person with disrespect. He doesn't treat that person with love and respect like he used to. Why? Because that negative assumption has become embedded within his heart. This is also a, a way that these negative assumptions can turn into sins when they are acted upon by the other parts of the body. And when it comes to negative assumptions, negative assumptions about the pious can particularly be detrimental for a person and an individual. There's one story that's mentioned in Raudul Riyahim, which immediately at his sunnah, Shaykh Tariqat, Hazrat Alama Abu Bilal, Muhammad Ilyas at Tar Qadri, Damat Barakatul Aliyah, he mentions in Fazani Sunnat. He says that a trader in Baghdad, he had some malice and some hatred, some enmity towards the awliya of Allah. One Friday, he saw Sayyidina Bishr Hafi, a great wali of Allah of his time. He saw Sayyidina Bishr Hafi, Rahmatullah Ali, leave the masjid straight after Salatul Jumu'ah. And this individual, who had this, these negative feelings about the awliya, Allah in his heart, he thought to himself, this individual, Bishr Hafi, he acts like he's a saint, he acts like he's a wali, but he's leaving the masjid straight after the salah. You know, he has no love for the masjid, he has no inclination to stay in the masjid. What kind of saint is he? What kind of wali is he? Let me follow him and see where he goes. So he decided to follow Sayyidina Bishr Hafi, rahmatullahi to see where he was going. On the way, Sayyidina Bishr Hafi, rahmatullahi with this man following behind, stopped at a bakery. And he bought some bread from this bakery. Now, when this trader, this individual, who had these negative feelings about the awliya, he saw this, that he's left the masjid, Bishr Hafi has left the masjid. And upon leaving the masjid, he stopped at a bakery and he bought bread. This further annoyed him. And he thought, this person has left the masjid. People think that he's a wali, acts like a pious person, and he's leaving the masjid early, just so he can go and get a piece of bread from the bakery. Now he's going to eat this sitting in the shade of a tree. The trader thought to himself, and now as soon as this person, as soon as Bishr Hafi Rahmatullah starts eating the bread, I will ask him, I will address him, I will say to him, is this how a saint behaves? Is this the behavior of a wali? That he leaves the masjid just for a piece of bread? What kind of wali are you? So he had these questions in his mind, and he was preparing to ask them. 
He kept on following the Honorable Shaykh, Sayyidina Bishr Hafi, rahmatullah alayhi, until Sayyidina Bishr, rahmatullah alayhi, entered a masjid in a small village. In the masjid was a sick person lying on the floor. Sayyidina Bishr Hafi, rahmatullah alayhi, with that bread in his hand, went, sat beside that sick person, and fed that sick person with his own blessed hands. Now the trader, the person who had followed Sayyidina Bishr Hafi, rahmatullah alayhi, was astonished to see this. He was amazed, and he realized that Sayyidina Bishr Hafi rahmatullahi ta'ala had not bought that bread for himself, but rather Sayyidina Bishr rahmatullahi ta'ala had bought that bread for that ill person. That individual left the masjid, and he wanted to see which village he was in. As he returned to the masjid, the sick person was still there, but Sayyidina Bishr Hafi rahmatullahi ta'ala had left. He was nowhere to be seen. So this individual, the trader from Baghdad, he asked the sick person, where is Bishr Hafi rahmatullahi alayhi gone? The sick person replied that he's left for Baghdad. He's returned to Baghdad. The trader then asked the sick person, how far is Baghdad from this village? The sick person replied and said that Baghdad is 40 miles away. Now the trader was confused. He was amazed. He was astonished. He thought, now, that, now I'm in trouble. He didn't understand how far he had come following the great shaykh, following Sayyidina Bishr Hafi rahmatullah alayhi. He then asked the sick person, so when will Bishr Hafi rahmatullah alayhi return to this masjid again? When will he return to this village again? The sick person informed him and said to him, that Sayyidina Bishr rahmatullah alayhi will come back next Friday. So that trader decided to stay there for another week as he had no other option. He had nothing with him. He had no means of traveling for 40 miles to return back to Baghdad. So he stayed there for an entire week. From Friday to Friday. The following Friday, Sayyidina Bishr Hafi rahmatullahi came to visit that sick person again and fed him the bread as usual. And Sayyidina Bishr Hafi rahmatullahi asked the trader why he had followed him. And the trader acknowledged his mistake. And he told him the whole story. The reason why I had followed you is because I had negative assumptions about you. Because I jumped to conclusions about why you had left the masjid. And I had these negative feelings about the awliya in my heart. And I wanted to confront you. And I wanted to ask you, what type, what type of wali are you? That you are leaving the masjid early to go to the bakery and buy bread. And this was the reason why I had followed you. But now, I have realized my mistake. Sayyidina Bishr Hafi rahmatullahi ordered him to stand up and to follow him again. So the trader followed Bishr Hafi rahmatullahi again and reached Baghdad in a very short amount of time. By witnessing this karama, this saintly miracle of Sayyidina Bishr Hafi rahmatullahi ta'ala this trader repented of having this negative feelings towards the awliya, jumping to negative conclusions, having negative suspicion, and he became a humble and sincere follower of the awliya. Dear views of Madin, inshallah, we should never look down on righteous people, especially the saints of Allah Azza And these pious individuals, they are sincere in their deeds. And the, the, the miraculous nature of these individuals is that they can travel long distances in the twinkling of an eye. This is the power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. And at times, the punishment for bad suspicion, the punishment for su'u run, the punishment for jumping to negative conclusions can be given to a person immediately in the world. It's very, very important for us as believers to reflect upon the state of our heart and not allow negative suspicions about any believer, let alone about the pious, to, to become firm within our hearts. Another narration that's mentioned, in Fezani Sunnat, by Amir Ahl Sunnat, Dan Barakatul Aliyah, that once in extremely cold weather, a very pious saint, Sayyidina Shaykh Abu Hassan Nuri, Ali, his maid brought him a piece of bread with some milk. The great saint was gathering up pieces of coal to light them so he would warm himself up and protect himself from the cold weather. His hands were still blackened by the coal when he began to eat. At this moment, the fire sparked up suddenly. When the fire sparked up, the milk spilled all over his hands. So now he had coal on his hands, the blackness of the coal, and also the milk was spilled over his hands. Upon this, the maid felt a feeling of disgust in her heart. And she formed a negative opinion. She had a negative sus suspicion. She jumped to a negative conclusion about the sheikh. She thought to herself that he's famous as a saint, but he doesn't even care about his cleanliness. Look at his hands. So with this thought in her mind, she left the home. She left the home 
She went to fulfill her household chores. When she did this, suddenly another woman grabbed her and accused her of stealing her bundle of clothes and thus dragged her to the police station. When Sayyidina Sheikh Abu Hassan Nuri came to know of this, he went to the police station to vouch for her, to testify for her and to back her up. The police officer responded that he could not release her because she had been accused of theft, of stealing. Whilst this conversation was going on, another maid entered the police station with a stolen bundle of clothes. And that bundle of clothes was handed over to its owner and the maid of Shaykh Abul Hussein Nuri Ali, was let off free because it became clear that she had not stolen that bundle of clothes because it was found. Now the Shaykh Ali, after his maid had been released and they were on the way home, he asked her and said to her, tell me, will you ever again have negative suspicion against the saints of Allah that they don't care about, that they don't care about their cleanliness? Now the maid was ashamed and she had learnt her lesson and she repented of bad suspicion and negative conclusions. Dear views of Madan from this we learn that this woman was immediately punished for having a bad suspicion about a pious person. So we should fear Allah Azza wa Jal, regardless of whether punishment comes to us in this world or not because it is haram to have a bad suspicion about a Muslim. And having negative suspicion, having these feelings in our heart, this, this is something which can cause us to sometimes even be punished in this world. And if we're not punished in this world, it can cause us to get further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It can become a barrier in our worship. One pious person mentions that he said that I used to perform worship of Allah's origin. I used to shed tears in fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I used to wake up in the middle of the night and worship Allah's origin. Once I saw somebody else crying in the fear of Allah's origin. And I jumped to a negative conclusion. This thought came into my mind. This thought came into my mind that why is this person crying? Is he crying to show off? Is he crying to show people? Because of this negative suspicion, because of this negative conclusion that I jumped to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give me the honor of crying in his fear. Allah azza wa did not allow tears to flow from my eyes for one whole entire year. Dear views of Madin Shalom, it's very, very important for us as Muslims, as believers, to reflect upon how we think about others and to always think about others in a positive light and not to think about others negatively. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barakatuh sallam. Dear views of Madin Shalom, from this we also learn that having negative conclusions, negative suspicions, negative assumptions about believers, especially about pious people, can even prevent us from acts of worship, can prevent us from things which might bring us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can form a barrier between us and piety. So it's very important for us to recognize the signs and symbols which will highlight whether or not the negative assumption has become firm in our hearts. So how do we know when we are afflicted with this disease of su'ul zam, of jumping to negative conclusions, of suspicion? There are a few signs that the ulama have highlighted. The first is that you feel hatred for that person. Before having that negative suspicion, before jumping to those negative conclusions, you didn't used to think anything about that person. You really used to think of that person in a positive light. But after that negative assumption became firm in your heart, you start feeling hatred for that person. Or maybe you start feeling that person as inferior to you. The second thing, you consider that person as a burden. That when that person comes to visit you, or that person comes to talk to you, then you don't feel like talking to them. You don't feel like hosting them like you would host any other person, any of your other friends or family or acquaintances. The third sign, you lose concern for his honor and well-being. Before you used to look out for that person, you used to keep an eye on him, to take care of him, you used to worry about him, you used to have concern for his betterment. But if the negative assumption becomes firm in your heart, and you firmly believe that the person is bad, or the person is evil. You have this suit of run for him. And you lose concern for his honor and well-being. Whether he is in a good state, whether he is in a bad state, it is of no concern to you. You don't care about him anymore. This is another sign that a negative assumption has become firm in your heart. And the fourth one, the overall feelings in your heart for that person begin to change. The feelings in your heart for that person used to be positive, but now they become negative. When you see him, you start getting angry. When somebody speaks about him, you start getting angry. 
these overall feelings in your heart transforming from positive to negative is a sign that that negative assumption has become firm in your heart and now you have fallen into this evil disease of jumping to negative conclusions, of negative suspicion. So what are the cures? How can we cure ourselves from this disease? Again, the scholars have provided us in the light of the Holy Quran, in the light of the Hadith, in the light of the books of spirituality, certain cures for negative suspicion. First of all, we should always look at the good qualities of people. We should always look at people with a positive light rather than looking at them in a negative light. We should always try to make excuses for people. Try to look at, look at people in terms of their good qualities rather than looking out for their bad qualities. Secondly, whenever a negative thought enters your heart and mind, you should reject it straight away and form a positive opinion immediately rather than allowing that negative thought to gain strength in your heart and to embed, embed itself in your heart. As soon as a negative thought comes in, you should immediately empty your heart of it and change it into a positive opinion. The next cure, you should continue to rectify yourself so that you become pious. When you focus on your own betterment, you focus on your own development and you become pious, then your heart will be, become pure. Because when your heart is pious, there will be no room in that heart. When the heart becomes enlightened, the heart becomes pious, the heart becomes pure. When the heart is pure, there will be no room in that pure heart for the filth of negative suspicion, for the impurity of negative suspicion. When your heart becomes enlightened, when your heart becomes filled with light and piety, then there will be no room in that heart for the darkness of negative suspicion. The next cure is to always fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear Allah Azza wa Jal and fear answering to Allah Azza wa Jal on the Day of Judgment. Because as we heard in the verse of the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal says that our hearts will also be questioned on the Day of Judgment. We will be asked questions about our hearts, what our hearts used to contain. And also another cure, finally, is to make dua. Because dua is the weapon of a believer. Make dua to be kept away from negative assumption. And make dua for the person you have negative thoughts about. If you have a negative thought about somebody, you have a negative assumption and suspicion about somebody, make dua for that person. Make dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower blessings and mercies upon that believer, upon that fellow Muslim brother. If you do so, then you will be cured from this evil of suspicion. So dear views of Madani channel, in the verse that we recited at the beginning, in which Allah Azza wa says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu ijtanibu kathiran min al-zhan O you who believe, abstain from excessive assumptions. Indeed, some assumption becomes a sin. In this part of the verse, Allah Azza wa after opening with this beautiful and honorable address, calling out to the believers, O you who believe, is telling us to stay away from the evil of su'u al of jumping to negative conclusions. In the next part of the verse, Allah Azza wa is ordering us to refrain from another evil. Allah Azza wa is purifying our character from another disease. Allah Azza wa says, do not look out for faults in people. Do not search for the faults of people. This is the second disease, the jassus, which Allah Azza wa is highlighting in this particular verse and is ordering the believers to stay away from. So what is the jassus? What does it mean? The definition of the jassus is trying to become aware about the hidden faults of people. Trying to become aware of those faults of people which are hidden away in their personal lives. And in the tafsir of this part of the verse, وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا Do not look out for faults. In tafsir Khazain al-Irfan, Hazrat Mawlana Sayyid Naimu Di Murada Badi Rahmatun Ali, he says, Do not look out for the faults of Muslims. Do not seek to uncover the hidden states which Allah Almighty has hidden for them. One of the sifat, one of the names of Allah Azza wa is As-Sattar, which means the one who covers the faults of people. When Allah Azza wa has covered certain faults of people, then how can any believer try to look to uncover those faults which Allah Azza wa has hidden? In one hadith, it's mentioned that the beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and ordered us 
وَلَا تَحَسَّسُوا وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا Do not spy and do not look out for other people's faults. And do not have hatred for one another. Do not be jealous of one another. And then towards the end of the narration, the beloved Prophet ﷺ said, وَكُونُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانًا And become, O oh, servants of Allah, brothers to one another. So as servants of Allah, as true believers, it's important that we realize that the relationship of believers is one of brotherhood. And Imam Fakhruddin al-Razi in Tafsir Kabir, he mentions that in this verse, Allah Azza wa Jal is teaching us to stay away from these three evils. And the positioning of this verse in the Holy Quran is very interesting. Because just two verses before, Allah Azza wa Jal taught that all believers are like brothers. So the relationship of believers is like brothers. When all believers are like brothers to us, then we should not try to look out for their faults. We should not be making negative suspicions about them. We should not be speaking bad about them behind their backs. When we regard Muslims as believers, then refraining from these evils becomes so much easier. As Muslims, as believers, as brothers, we should be helping one another. We should be assisting one another. We should be protecting one another. And we should be covering each other's faults rather than trying to do tajassus and uncovering people's faults. In one narration, the beloved Prophet ﷺ mentioned the reward for covering the faults of others, the opposite of tajassus, covering the faults of others, which is a positive and praiseworthy characteristic for the heart of every believer. It mentions that the beloved Nabi ﷺ said, مَن نَفَّسَ عَن مُؤْمِنٍ قُرْبَةً مِنْ قُرَبِ الدُّنْيَا نَفَّسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قُرْبَةً مِنْ قُرَبِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةً Whoever removes from a believer a difficulty from the difficulties of the world, Allah Azza wa Jal will remove from him a difficulty from the difficulties of the Day of Judgment. If in this world we help our fellow Muslim brothers, we remove their difficulties, Allah Azza wa Jal will remove difficulties from us when we need it the most on the Day of Judgment. And then the beloved Prophet Ali Sallallahu said, وَمَنْ يَسَّرَ عَلَى مُعْسِرٍ يَسَّرَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ And whoever brings ease upon a person in need, whoever causes a person in need to feel ease, يَسَّرَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Allah Azza wa Jal will grant that person ease in the world and in the hereafter. And then the beloved Prophet Ali Sallallahu focused on the reward of covering and hiding the faults of our fellow Muslim brothers. The opposite of tajassus. وَمَنْ سَتَرَ مُسْلِمًا سَتَرَهُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ And whoever covers and hides the faults of believers, of fellow Muslims, Allah Azza wa Jal will cover that person's faults, will hide that person's faults in the world and in the hereafter. So my dear viewers of the channel, we learn from this, that if we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cover our faults, and we are not perfect, as human beings, we have faults. It's the Prophets who are perfect and free from sin. As normal believers, we have faults within us. We have ne negative characteristics within us. We have things within us which we wouldn't want other people to find out about. Which we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hide. Which we want Allah azza wa to cover. If we want Allah azza wa to cover our faults, if we want Allah azza wa to cover our defects in this world and in the hereafter, and it's very important for us to free ourselves from the disease of the jesus, to stop trying to search for the faults of others, and to start hiding and covering the faults and defects of our fellow Muslim brothers. And in one narration, it's mentioned regarding the evil of uncovering the faults of our fellow Muslims, of the jesus. It's mentioned that our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whoever uncovers the fault of his Muslim brother. من كشف عورة أخيه المسلم Whoever uncovers and reveals the fault of his Muslim brother كشف الله عورته حتى يفضحه بها في بيته Whoever uncovers and reveals the hidden fault of his Muslim brother Allah عز وجل will uncover the faults of that person to the extent that that person will become humiliated and disgraced even within his own home. Even within the four walls of his own home, Allah Azza wa will cause that person 
to become humiliated and disgraced. Which person? The person who is looking out for faults in other Muslims. And in one narration it mentions that those who look for faults in others will be raised on the Day of Judgment in the form of dogs. And Mufti Ahmed al-Khan Naimi Ali, Hakim al-Ummah, he mentions in the commentary of the Ahadith, he says that on the Day of Judgment, when people are raised from their graves, they'll be raised in human form. But whilst they are being dragged to the plains of the Day of Judgment, where they will be judged, some of them will be transformed into the images of different animals as a punishment for the deeds that they used to do in the world. In this hadith is teaching us those who look for faults in others, those who do the justus, those who look to uncover the faults of others which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has covered. Such individuals, because of this evil disease in their hearts, will be raised on the day of judgment in the form of dogs. And Imam al Ghazali, rahimahullah, in Ihya wa Ulum al Deen, he mentions some examples of the justus. And this should put it into context what it means to look out for the faults of others. And this should tell us examples of things that we have to refrain from in our daily lives. He says, an example of the justus is putting your ear next to the wall, trying to listen to what's happening in the next room. Somebody's in a private room having a private conversation, maybe with their family members. Somebody is in a home next to yours and you share a wall with them. Putting your ear to that wall, listening to what's happening in that room, with the intention of uncovering the hidden faults. This is classified as the justus. Looking to see what somebody has hidden in their clothes. Trying to see if they've got something forbidden, something sinful, hidden in their clothes. This is also the justus. Asking somebody's neighbor about them in an attempt to get secret information about them. Asking somebody's neighbor about them to tell you secret information about that person, about their neighbor, so that you can become aware of those faults. You can become aware of those defects. This is also classified as tajassus. This is also this evil disease which Allah Azza wa Jal is forbidding the believers from in this verse of the Holy Quran. And Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us and ordering us to refrain from first of all negative suspicion and secondly tajassus, looking out for faults in people. And the, the best cure that the scholars have mentioned for this evil disease of tajassus, this feeling that people have that they want to look out for faults in others. The best way is to concentrate on rectifying the faults within yourself. Because whenever you point one finger at somebody else, there are three fingers pointing back at you. When you look at the faults in your own self, in your own character, in your own relationship with your family members, the way you conduct yourself, your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in your deen and in your dunya, when you look at your own faults, your own defects, and you concentrate and focus on rectifying yourself, and rectifying your own weaknesses, then you will have no time to focus on the weaknesses of others. You'll have no time to search for the faults of others and try to spread them to others with evil intentions. Dear views of Madani Channel, it's very important for us to try to rectify ourselves. If we become involved in rectifying ourselves, inshaAllah, we will save ourselves from this disease, from this evil of searching for the faults of others. And one beautiful way that we can do this is by coming into the environment of Dawud Islami. Alhamdulillah, in the environment of Dawud Islami, we are encouraged to travel on a regular basis in the Madani Kafilas, in the way of Allah Azza wa Jal. In the Madani Kafilas, we are taught knowledge of deen. We gain an opportunity to spend time in the house of Allah Azza wa Jal, to improve our connection and our relationship with our Lord Almighty. We are encouraged in the environment of Dawud Islami to fill out our Madani and our Maat card every day. Every day to reflect upon our deeds, to ask ourselves questions about how we have spent our day, to reflect upon ourselves and to highlight our weaknesses, so that we can involve ourselves and focus and concentrate on rectifying our own faults. These are all ways that we can adopt to removing these evils from our heart. In this verse of the Holy Quran, in which Allah Azza wa addresses the believers directly, Allah Azza wa is telling us to refrain from three evils. We have been able to cover two in this episode, inshaAllah Azza wa We will cover the third one, backbiting, in the following episode of this silsila, O you who believe. Keep tuned to this silsila and all of the other silsilas of Madani Channel. Keep involved with the activities of Dawat Islami. Attend your local weekly ijtima on a regular basis. Travel in the Madani Kafilas of Dawat Islami. Fill out your Madani Makar every day. Inshallah, you will see the blessings of this in your family, 
in this life and in the hereafter. May Allah Azza wa purify our hearts and give us a true understanding of the Quran. Ameen. Bijahin Nabi Lameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barakatuh. Oh, you.